Speaker Series event brought to you by the Foundation for Free Enterprise Education. We hope you're safe and enjoying your summer. If this is your first time joining us, welcome and thank you for your time. These live sessions have been organized to provide viewers like you with a sneak peek into one of the most meaningful and impactful elements of the PFEW experience, our motivational speakers. This evening, we are pleased to have for you the nation's leading voice on building sales culture. You may now be thinking, what's sales culture? Sales culture is a mindset. We'll let our speaker tell you all about that. Before we turn things over to our presenter, just a few reminders. As you listen to tonight's message, if you have questions or comments, feel free to share them with us in the Q&A box. We will be monitoring your questions and we'll get to as many of them as possible at the conclusion. Please note, all questions and comments can be sent anonymously. Since this event is being held as a webinar, one-on-one -on -one conversations between our speaker and the audience are challenging. Therefore, at the end of this event, we will once again be offering an open meet and greet session. We invite all of you to join us so you may ask questions and speak directly with our presenter. A separate meeting link is now available in the chat section. Please note the meet and greet session will not be recorded, so the conversations will not be shared. And we can't wait to see you there. Thank you for joining us this evening. We have enjoyed bringing these live events into your home every Thursday evening and look forward to continue doing so throughout the summer. Be sure to visit our website, pfew.org, for more information about past events, future speakers, and our taped interview content. So let's get going. As I mentioned before, tonight's speaker is a widely sought after engaging motivational keynote speaker and trainer. He has been involved with our summer program, Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week, for many years. Mm -hmm. His audiences range from small groups to assemblies of 5,000 or more. He demonstrates how every conversation is a selling moment. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Todd Cohen. Wow, Michelle, that is, you know, I wish my mother were here to hear that because that may be one of the best introductions I've ever had in my life. It was mercifully short. It was absolutely all true. And and all, and all kidding aside, I am so glad to be here with uh, you folks from the PFEW. I have enjoyed every summer that I have come up and had an opportunity to speak with everybody. And I have to tell you, even though we're in a pandemic, this is, I applaud you all for doing this and keeping these going because these messages from all of your speakers are different, they're unique, and they're what I wish I had learned when I was their age. And let me tell you, that was a long time ago. And you know, what, what young people need to learn today is so vastly different than what it was when we were in high school. And Michelle, you're a lot younger than I am, but let's just say what we learned in high school today just is very, very, very different in terms of getting ahead, advancing ourselves, getting that college interview nailed, selling ourselves, because that's what we're gonna talk about tonight is the fact that the common denominator of all of our success is about our ability to sell ourselves. I'm not gonna give you sales training tonight, folks. I'm gonna teach you how to sell the most precious product you will ever, ever own in your whole life, and that is you. And you know what's interesting? First of all, actually, before I get to what's interesting, let me just say, oh, oh, I mean, here, over my shoulder, you're seeing a terrible towel. I am a Pittsburgh native. And I, I thought, well, since I'm speaking to a whole statewide group of young, young up-and-comers, young, young folks, soon-to-be young professionals, I wanted to share with you that I'm from Pittsburgh. I bleed black and gold. I'm still a Steelers fan. But I live, and I should say, and I live in Philadelphia. So yes, I like the Eagles as well, but the Steelers just have a cooler towel. And to those of you who are joining us tonight from the middle of the state, Harrisburg, Williamsport, wherever you might be, I don't know which team you go for, but they're both good and we're, we live in a great state. And you know, we live in a great time right now because even though we're in this pandemic, as you all know so well, it's, there has never been a better time to sharpen and begin to develop skills that you're going to need for your entire professional life. In fact, 
maybe even for your personal lives as well. So what I wanna share with you tonight, just for the next couple of minutes that we're gonna to visit together, is the most important lesson that no one has yet taught you until tonight. And what I can promise you is, if you can take some notes here this evening, if you can remember what it is I'm gonna share with you here in a little bit, this lesson will serve you for your entire life, yes? This isn't something you're gonna find in a book. This isn't something they're gonna teach you in college. And I can promise you, when you get that college interview, when you go and you go to college and you graduate and you get your degree, guess what you're gonna need? A job, because nobody's gonna be standing outside at graduation handing you money. You're gonna to have to go out and get a job and earn a living, just like we all do. And I gotta tell you, the lesson I'm gonna share with you tonight is how you can make that better, for you throughout your entire professional career because they don't teach you this in college now or even in high school and now even though i went to franklin regional in murraysville and i don't know if anybody out there is from the murraysville area but hello if you're there it's nice to meet you and hopefully you'll maybe you'll come to the meet and greet after this look you know as we begin to move through our high school time and into our college time and then of course once we get into the professional world there are certain things that we want to make sure happen, right? We want to make sure a couple of things are always possible for us. One is we want to make sure, of course, that we get hired. And you know, whether this is a summer job or an internship or something during college, or again, when you get that diploma finally and you go and you get your first job, even if you go on to medical school or law school or whatever you do, you're still going to need to go for an interview. You're still going to need to be evaluated. People are still going to make a decision on you. And that is when this lesson tonight about how to sell yourself will come in incredibly handy. So we want to get hired, obviously. I mean, that's a big part of life, right? We want to get hired so we can have a good life and make income. We want to stay hired. I mean, that's really important. Getting hired is easy. Sometimes, sometimes, staying hired is another story altogether. And then of course, we wanna make money, who doesn't? Listen, you're, you're working so hard in high school right now, you are engaged with PFEW because you wanna learn about business and learn about how things are done. You wanna to go to college, become even smarter with all that great stuff you're gonna learn. And then we have to go into the world and really, really begin to make a difference. And that's when we begin to make some money. And of course, friends, we always want to be memorable because when we're memorable, people come back to us over and over and over again. They may offer us a new job. They may offer us an internship. They may offer us something that we didn't know that they could offer us because you're memorable, because there's something about the way that you were able to sell yourself that made them say, you know what, I remember that person, or I remember that young lady, or there was something about that person that still to this day stands out, and that's what we want to accomplish. So the one thing I'm going to teach you tonight that no one has taught you yet, and no one will be teaching you in college, because it's not in the book, is how to sell yourself when you answer one question. You know, when you go more and more into the business world, you're gonna find out that there's one question that is the most asked question in business. It's the number one question around the world that people will ask you as you get further and further into your careers. And guess what? When you're in college, as I said, if you're looking for that internship, if you're looking for that co-op, you're going to start hearing this question more and more. And that question, friends, that question is something, boy, you're going to hear it forever and we have to get used to it. What do you do? That's the question. And you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm a high school student. What do you mean, what do I do? I understand. Guess what? Now's the time we begin to think about answering this question as we go through our careers. And you might be thinking, man, I'm not even thinking about my career. I'm just thinking about school next year. I'm thinking about how am I going to do this thing virtually. I'm trying to think about getting into college and where do I want to go and filling out all those applications and mom and dad telling me, you know, what they can afford and what we can afford and what we can do. And there's so much going on. And at the end of the day, you're going to be getting interviews 
and you're going to have to be memorable because every day we have to sell ourselves. And that begins in the business world with the question, what do you do? You see, what we're going to learn over time as we get more and more into the world is that people, and you know what I'm talking about, people actually have a very short attention span. You know, many of you right now, you might be looking at your phone a little bit or playing on the iPad while hopefully you're listening to me on the computer because our attention spans are so short and we have so many things competing for our attention. You know, in any given day, our brains are flooded with information, news and things to read and updates and stuff about school and friends and social media and Instagram and Twitter and and Facebook and LinkedIn and all this stuff that completely fills our minds. So we don't have the time that we used to have in terms of our attention span. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Today, tonight, what I want you to understand is that our attention spans are somewhere between seven and 10 seconds. You see, in that 11th second, we're somewhere else. We've moved on. A dial in our head has turned a little bit and something else has our attention. Now, I know you know what I'm talking about because we're all, doesn't matter what your age is, we're all juggling so much. And as long as we all have a phone, well, guess what? That actually helps our attention spans get shorter and shorter. So as you move further into your, as you begin, I should say, to move into your personal and professional careers, your lives, your opportunity to impress people, your opportunity to become memorable, your opportunity to get hired and stay hired, that window where you will have somebody's attention, that window where you will be able to sell yourself has, is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And I don't know that there's going to be a time when, in fact, it will start to get longer again. So we have to begin now on this really important lesson of saying something, an answer that makes sense. When people say to me, what do you do? And we're able to answer that question in a way that gets people to say, wow, tell me more. That's interesting. You know what? That was memorable. That really was, you said something that made me actually want to ask you more questions. So if you're in a position right now, tonight, to write anything down, that's a note that I would ask you to take. Remember that your that attention spans are short. How will you begin to think about answering that question, what do you do? And again, I'm going to say this one more time. I know many of you are in high school. In fact, I believe everybody on this call, we might have a few parents, you're not in high school, you're in the work world and you know what I'm talking about. This question, what do you do, is actually a question that we can start working on right now. Do you know why? Because you all have interests, you all have passions, you all have things that, that get you help get you up in the morning and say, this is why I'm getting good grades, so I can go to school and I can get this degree or I can become this or I can become that, whatever it is that you want to do. So let me keep talking about this a little bit more and hopefully this will continue to make some sense. So we always are faced with the question in our professional careers, can you sell yourself? And simply put, that means that nothing is guaranteed. Nothing will happen just because we want it to, because we have a piece of paper that says it should. Now, don't get me wrong, the power of will is important and, the, and your passion about wanting something is very important. And that's all a component of can you sell yourself? Because you're going to learn in not too, not too long down the road that your ability to sell yourself is all about connecting with people, engaging with people and understanding what sales truly is. And I'll share that with you in a little bit as well. So back in 2008, many of you, well, you were much younger then. I was in the work world. The rules of work life, the rules of America, the rules of corporate America, I should say, really around the world changed. 
from the perspective of how we stay memorable. You know, what you're going to learn in time is a very conventional style of thought. And what that means is we have titles. And as we go through our work career, our careers in general, we'll get titles. We get a new job, we get a new title. We get another job, we get a promotion, we find a new position, we get a new title. Here's the thing I want you to remember. As we're evolving in this world today and people are looking for better ways to connect, titles are meaningless. Titles have less and less importance. In other words, I'm not saying they're not important, and I'm not saying that they don't make us feel good, and I'm certainly not saying that we don't want a nice title. What I am saying is not everybody understands what your title means. Not everybody understands what a title actually implies about you, and it doesn't answer the question, what do you do? You see, you're going to develop interests over the course of the next four, five, six, eight years. You're going to develop a set of passions. You're going to become full of belief about what you can accomplish in this world. And that's going to formulate who you become. And then we're going to have to be able to go out and explain it to people so that they say, you're the person I want to hire. You're the person I want on my team. You know what? tell me more. Your title doesn't matter to me. Tell me what you do. You see, how you're going to help people eventually stay in business is what matters. So what I also want to share with you is that there are three words which will damage our careers. They damage your future. You see, when someone says to you, what do you do? You never want to say, I'm just the because you see those three words send the message to the college to the person who's interviewing you for college or the person who's interviewing you for an internship or the person who's interviewing you for your first big job after school or the person who's interviewing you for for your summer job you see the words i'm just the don't help you sell yourself what they send the message that it sends is you know what go go somewhere else I'm not the right person. So I'd like you to write this down and never forget this throughout the entire course of your professional career. And that actually starts now. You see, again, you may be thinking I'm in high school. Do I really need to be worrying about this? And the answer is, no, I don't want you to worry about it. I want you to understand it and learn it and embrace it and start today in this lesson that you won't learn in college or in high school. How do we answer the question, what do we do? And one of the answers, or the worst answer, the answer we never wanna say is, I'm just the. Because if you, see, I'm, if you say, I'm just the, or you answer with what will eventually be your title one day, people, they don't care. You see, because if it doesn't resonate with me, if it doesn't make sense, if I can't immediately understand what you do in that seven to 10 second window, I'll move on to something else. I'll go somewhere else. I'll talk to somebody else. I'll pick up my phone and start texting my friend again. You see, our job, or one of our many jobs, is to help people connect with us connect with you in a way that's deeper and more meaningful. You know, everybody who's listening to me on this call tonight, you have a passion. You have interests. You, there is something that you want to do with your life. I know that. And you're all going to be incredibly successful. Every young person I've had the blessing of working with who has come through PFEW over the past, I don't know, four or five summers that I've spent up there in Williamsport, have impressed me to no end. Everybody has a passion. Now we have to turn that passion into words, in those words into an answer. So what do you do? So let's just say, for example, that you're a computer programmer. You like to build an app, for, for example. Well, if I were to say to you, what do you do? And you say, well, I build apps. Well, that may not really be understandable to me. You see, maybe I don't really know what that means. I mean, I know what an app is, obviously. I have them all over my phone. As a speaker, I have an app for my business. 
but not everybody understands it. And we can't, un and we can't assume that people will always understand what it is we want them to understand about us. So instead of saying, well, I'm a programmer, or I design apps, what you might want to say is, I help you become more visible. Or perhaps you'll say, I build things that make people find you online. You see, when you say that, that I can understand. That makes sense to me. That ma makes me say, tell me more. We want to be very, very clear about one thing here, friends. As we go through life starting tonight, our ability to sell ourselves is critical. And our ability to sell ourselves begins with the relationships we're going to build. You know, you have wonderful relationships now. You have friendships, you have teachers, you have parents, you have parents of your friends. You have people who know you and love you and care for you and want to see you succeed. Those are wonderful relationships to have right now. As you go through your high school and then your college experience and then into the work world, your relationships are your that are your currency. They are your money. They are the people who will help you define how you answer that question, what do I do? So as we know, relationships begin with personal engagement. Relationships begin with conversation. Relationships begin with bringing down the shield, not hiding behind a title or a resume or something on paper. Res uh, re relationships begin when we can connect with people and help them see our passion. And often that starts with, well, what do you do? Like, what do you like to do? And our ability to answer that question will make all the difference in the world. Relationships continue because of the value people see in you. The opportunity they see in you to help do wonderful things. This is where our ability to sell ourselves becomes so important. Now, many of you may understand the Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube is a toy that's been around for many, many years. I played with it when I was your age at Franklin Regional High School in Murraysville, Pennsylvania, many, many years ago. You know, the Rubik's Cube is an interesting analogy for what I'm talking about this evening. Those of you who have seen a Rubik's Cube or have played with it know that you move it around. You constantly are going like this to try to get all the colors to line up. You know, when we do this and we're building new relationships, you know, as we move the Rubik's Cube around, we're meeting new people, we're engaging new people, we're connecting with people, all who are saying to us, what do you do? What do you like to do? Why do you want to go to this school? What do you want to do when you get out? You see, our job, and yes, I said job because it starts now, our job is to stay top of mind. In other words, be memorable. Remember I said at the beginning of this presentation this evening, we want to get hired, stay hired, make money, and be memorable. And that's so important. In fact, we want you to stand out and differentiate from the crowd. You know, when you graduate college, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a lot of people who are in your program who are graduating with the same degree. You know, when you go to get your first job, there's going to be a lot of people who say, yep, I want that same job. Yep, I'm competing with you for that job. Yes, you're going to be competing for jobs all the time. How do you stand out from the crowd? How do you get the hiring manager, the college admission counselor, the person offering the internship, the person, the professor who wants you to work with him to learn new skills? How do you differentiate? It's by being able to put your passion into words and answer that question, what do you do? Now, a moment ago, I used an example of building an app. Well, you know what? Here's the thing that I want you to write down and I want you to remember forever. You do something that people need. In fact, you will be doing lots of things that people need.
Now, you may not know exactly what that is yet, and that's okay. You may not know what it is next week or next month, and that's okay. You may not know what it is for a while, and that's okay. When we finally learn the answer to this question, guess what? Then you know how to answer the question, what do you do? So as I started to say a minute ago, the example of the person who builds apps, he's doing something that people need. I need an app. Most organizations, most consumer retailers, lots and lots of people build apps, need apps. They make our life easier. So maybe that's one way we answer that question. Well, you said you... able to answer that question in a way that, again, inspires and motivates people to say, wait a minute, you got my attention. Tell me more. You see, you beat that seven second window. And a lot of times people will say to you, okay, but what do you do? And what they're saying to you, friends, what they're really saying to you is say it in a language that I understand. Telling me you're, you're a computer programmer when, I, when it, I don't understand what computer programmers do, I'm using this as an example, is, is a time for you to say, well, I help do this or I help you do that. You see, when we talk about how to answer the question, what do you do, it often begins with I help, I try, I build, I create, I motivate, I inspire. When people ask me what I do, I could always say, well, I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I've written two books, I have a third one coming out. I could give you all of my details, but the reality of it is nobody really cares. What I say is, everyone's in sales. I build sales culture. And when, in my introduction, you heard Michelle refer to the fact that I work with organizations to help them build a sales culture because what I do is not sales training, it's helping people understand that everyone's in sales in a company. Now, I'll leave that for a little bit later. That's a slightly different conversation. But as long as you're grabbing people's attention and they're saying, wait a minute, tell me more, tell me more. I might be able to use this. Wait a minute, this might be something I need. Wait a minute, you're the person that I want to hire because of your passion. Now you know you are on your way. You are, all, you are always thinking about how to differentiate. You see, your what do you do statement is all about you. It's not a license to brag. It's not a license to say, I do X, Y, and, and name all these things and recite from a list. It's your amazing, marvelous opportunity to simply say in a few words, so that it's in that seven to 10 second window, I something. Because when you hear those magical words, that's interesting, tell me more. Or that's really cool, you know? I thought about that. Or, boy, I'm not really sure what you just said, but tell me more. You see, if conversation begins, guess what you've done? You've now sold yourself. You've now begun a new relationship. You have now begun to build out an incredible, incredible army of people who will think of you, hire you, keep you hired, pay you money, and keep you memorable because they'll remember you. You see, we always want to remember that our ability to build relationships isn't up to somebody else. It's up to us. It's up to you. You're the gatekeeper. And the key to that lock, the key to that lock, friends, is your ability to say something when people say, what do you do? Or tell me more about you. To say something that inspires them to want to know more about you. So we have to work hard at this. This isn't easy. In fact, I'm going to share with you that this is probably, no, I know for a fact, this is the hardest lesson you will ever learn. You will go through four, six, eight, ten 10 years of college, and nobody will ever teach you this lesson. You, by being here tonight, are getting a significant leg up, and I applaud you for that. You know, when we talk about selling behaviors, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, 
this concept of what do you do, this most important lesson is what I call your value proposition. And if you're in a position to write things down right now, I'd love for you to write that down because I never want you to forget that your value proposition is how we answer that question, what do you do? You know, as you go into your careers, you may hear the term, the elevator pitch. If we have some parents or teachers listening in this evening, we, we have heard that term before. And you know, it's an old term. It goes back millions of years. All right, not quite millions of years, but when I was about your age, it's still around actually. And what the elevator pitch means is, well, in theory, or it's a metaphor, people get onto an elevator and they ask, what question? What do you do? Because you're in close proximity. So that's the question everybody always asks. What do you do? And you typically had, oh, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds to impress somebody. But if you've been paying attention, which I know you have, you know you don't have 30 seconds. You have how many? Seven to 10, if you're lucky. So this is my dog, Luna. Now, this is... She's a Shiba Inu. In fact, she's right over here sleeping on the sofa, but you can't see her. She's my best buddy. She keeps me comfortable when I do my keynotes like this. You know, you're going to find times, friends, when people are resistant. They don't want to hear it. They don't understand it. There's something about what you said. There's something about the way you answered that interview question. There's something about the way you interacted with a new relationship that you feel people pulling back a little bit, that you feel them saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not getting it. You see, if you feel resistance, it's because we have to be very, very, very good at connecting with people. You see, selling ourselves, selling ourselves to get what we want and deserve, as I said a moment ago, begins with the relationships that we will build. Not only the ones that you have, but the thousands of relationships that you will have the amazing opportunity to build over the course of your college time and your careers. And if you think that people are a little resistant, it's because they can't identify. They can't, they're looking for something about you that gets them to say, I understand, I get it. Now I feel a connection. You see, this requires what I call some vulnerability. And we'll get to that in a second as well. You know, I said a moment ago that the average attention span is somewhere between seven and 10 seconds. You know, I may have not been true on this point. It may not have quite been accurate. Actually, the average attention span is less. It's actually less than this goldfish. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit, but what I want you to understand is that people have such short attention spans that how we interact, how we engage must be memorable. So, so often it has to do with what do you do? And even as a college, is even as a high school student, you may be thinking, well, I don't, I don't have a career. I'm just a high school student. Well, first thing you never want to say, I'm just a high school student because you do something. If you cut lawns, if you work in the library, if you work in the local supermarket, whatever it is that you're doing right now, how would you word it differently? You know, when I was your age to earn money, I cut lawns up and down my street in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. I lived in a place called Heather Highlands. And I used to go from door to door and ask people if I could cut their lawns. And one day somebody said to me, you ready for this? They said, hey, Todd, you did a nice job. I said, thank you. And actually, I was only getting $3 a lawn. That's how far back we're going. He said, you did a really, really good job. I said, thank you. I enjoy cutting lawns. He said, you're doing so much more than cutting our lawn. I said, no, I'm not. I'm just the lawn cutter. See what I said? I'm just the lawn cutter. Well, do you know what my friend, my neighbor said to me? 
He said, no, no, you're making our house beautiful. I said, wow, I never thought of it like that. So the next day I walked two doors down to a house whose lawn I didn't cut. And I remember knocking on the door and the, the, the owner answered the door. Nice man. I knew him. I knew his kids. And he said, what do you want? What can I help you with? I said, well, I'd like to cut your lawn. He said, well, I got somebody who cuts my lawn. It's me. I need the exercise. And I said, well, but I make homes beautiful. And he looked at me and he said, you got me on that. You absolutely sold me. I have never heard anybody say that. So the fact that you're in high school doesn't matter. This is a lesson we need to learn right now. And when I knocked on that final house and I said, I want to make your house beautiful. You see, in that seven to 10 seconds, I had his attention. I didn't say, I want to be able to cut your lawn. I didn't talk about how great my lawnmower was. I didn't talk about how fast I could do it. I didn't even talk about my price. I talked about what I could do for him. Because in a moment ago, I said, you do something that people need. He needed me. He needed somebody to help make his home beautiful. By the way, attention spans are even getting shorter. They've shortened since I started this presentation tonight. In fact, maybe attention spans are somewhere around this mosquito. I have to tell you, folks, we don't have a lot of time anymore to be memorable. Do you know this was said many years ago by a very famous author, somebody that I, I used to read all the time. I love his works. I recommend him. His name is Stephen Covey. And he said, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. What does that mean? People are making judgments before you ever finished speaking. So how we stand out, how we differentiate, how we stay memorable will never be more important than it is for you starting tonight. What people are really wanting to know is why should I engage you? Why should I hire you? Well, all you ever have to do is think of that example. When I walked down my street, knocked on that one house, the door of that one house, and I said, I make lawns beautiful, I make homes beautiful. And you see, what I was, the question I was answering for the owner of that home was why he should engage me. Because remember I said your value proposition, it's about you, not features and benefits, not things like my lawnmower and what I charge and how fast I can do it. You'll get to that. Give me a reason to say, tell me more. You see, when I answered the question, I make homes beautiful, that value proposition, that answer is what I call agnostic. Now, certainly I do not mean this in a religious sense. By Because the word agnostic has many meanings. And by agnostic, what I mean is, you had to ask me the question, tell me more, because there wasn't anything identifiable. In other words, I could be anything. I could be somebody who comes in and cuts the grass. I could be somebody who comes in and waters the lawn. I could be a landscaper. I could be the person who plants more trees and bushes. You see, my answer, you, were, you had to ask me for more information. That's what agnostic means, neutral. It means you need more information. Your value proposition, your what do you do, it's all about how you see yourself right here in your heart. What do you like to do? What do you do? What do you think you do? When you do something, what's the end result? In, that, in the case of the lawns, I was making homes beautiful. That, by the way, was from the mouth of my customer, which leads me to the final lesson. We can't, well, next to final lesson, we can't overthink this. Don't think too much about this. Ask people what you do. You see, now we've got to unlock. We've got to find the key and unlock for us how we answer that question. Because if you think about my example of when the one homeowner said, no, 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 no. You're not just the guy who cuts my lawn. You're making my home beautiful. You see, I heard 
from somebody else, through somebody else's eyes, the answer to that most important question, what do you do? You see, it's not up for us to answer the question. It's up for us to ask people to help us answer that question. So we have to take some time and figure this out because it's not up to you. So write this down if you would. This is a big phrase, and you may or may not get this right away, and that's okay. Vulnerability is nobility. Let me explain this. When you're vulnerable, when you allow people to help you, when you allow people to give you advice, when you allow people to help you in your career. In fact, right now, those of you who are truly listening right now and are being open to my message, you're being vulnerable because you're being open. You're being approachable. And you know something? These are the most powerful selling tools and relationship building tool you will ever make you will ever develop in your entire life. So I gave you a bonus tonight. Not only are we talking about what do you do, the thing that nobody's gonna teach you until tonight is vulnerability is actually a very powerful skill that we can build. Hey, guess what? It's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard for, to let people see us. That's something you'll develop and you'll improve and you'll build over time. I know you will. When I say vulnerability is nobility, you know, nobility means, wow, I'm doing the right thing. It's noble. It's a noble cause. It's a good cause. Vulnerability is noble. Why? Because when you allow people to share with you how they see you, then you build better relationships. You see, when that homeowner said to me, through his eyes, his opinion, you help make our home beautiful, you see, my response, I still remember it to this day, was, wow, I never thought of it like that. You see, my ability to listen, take it in, embrace it, and actually think about it and see the goodness in it was my being vulnerable. And that for me was a noble thing because it helped make me better. You see, if we want to learn over the course of time, high school, college, and beyond what we do, it's not up to you. It's up to people to help you see what you do through their eyes. So let me tell you one final story. This picture is from a very long time ago. This was my college graduation. That's me on the left. You can see a few things have changed. I have hair, and I was a lot thinner then, too. The gentleman on the right was my father. His name was Marvin Cohen. As I said, I'm a Pittsburgh native. We grew up. Uh, I grew up in Monroeville until I was eight. Went to Gateway, and then, well, actually, I didn't go to Gateway. Well, yeah, I guess I did go to Gateway, Evergreen Elementary School. And then we moved to Murraysville, where I graduated from Franklin Regional. My father was born and raised in Pittsburgh. Now, he passed away about 30 years ago. In fact, he was my age right now when he passed away. And, you know, one of the most powerful lessons I learned from him was exactly what I'm sharing with you tonight. How we answer that question, what do you do so you stay memorable? so you get hired, so you stay hired, so you make money, and you're memorable. You see, my father was a wedding photographer. He took pictures at weddings. That's what he did. And when people would stop him and say, his name was Marvin, he was a tall guy, about six foot four, and they would look up and they would say, so what do you do? Well, typically when they first met him, because as I said at the very beginning of this presentation this evening, around the world, that's the number one question. And that's where people start. What do you do? My father never, ever said, I'm a photographer because it wasn't agnostic. In other words, 
it's, it was immediately understood what he does. And if somebody didn't care or didn't need a photographer or didn't see a value in continuing to talk with him because of his title, they moved on. My father answered that question in a simple and brilliant way. And I remember hearing how he answered this question starting when I was about seven or eight years old. He would always say, I make people smile. You see, that's agnostic because he could be a clown. He could be a photographer. He could be a magician. He could be anything. It forced somebody to say, really, tell me more. That's a great answer. You see, your value proposition, your what do you do, is the most powerful question that we must learn to answer throughout our career because it's going to make us approachable. It's going to make us somebody that people want to spend time with. It's going to make us memorable. So to effectively sell ourselves, we have to understand the impact we have on other people. Now I say clients in here because the message is for everybody. And yes, if you're cutting lawns as I did at 14 years old, I had clients. You see, people want to remember the difference that you make. Please remember that. People want to remember the difference that you're going to make in their lives. And I promise to each and every one of you listening this evening, you will make a profound difference in people's lives. Okay, one last story. I said the last story was the last story. This is the last story. These three pictures are of me. Uh, so three years ago, two years ago, and one year ago. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was very fortunate in that my cancer was caught early and that I had some good options. And when I was deciding how I wanted to be treated, I decided to get a very unique surgical procedure. And there were only a few doctors who actually did it. The doctor that I chose is the gentleman that you see in this picture. His name happens to be Dr. Lee. And I'll never forget when I first met Dr. Lee, the very first time I asked him, believe it or not, this question. So what do you do? Now, Dr. Lee is world renowned. I was very lucky to be able to see him. Dr. Lee has a track record on this surgery that nobody in the world has. He's the best literally, quite literally in the world. One of them now. I'm sure there's more. And he didn't say to me, I'm the so-and-so doctor, or I'm the best, or I'm this, or I'm that. He didn't tell me the number of surgeries he's done. He didn't tell me any of his features and benefits. What he said to me was, and he was so vulnerable and so approachable and so humble. He said, I'm the guy who's going to get you back on your feet. And see, that was how he sold himself. When he said, I'm the guy who's going to get you back on your feet, it was agnostic. You see, it was about him. And it was about me understanding that, guess what? He was going to work really hard to save my life, which he did, which is why I'm able to stand here tonight and share this story with you. These three pictures are one year apart over the last three years when I would go and get my one year check. If you're educating somebody, you're selling. Your teachers are the best salespeople ever. If you're providing guidance, you're selling. If you're passionate, you're selling. If you're asking for something, you're selling. If you have a point to make, you're selling. If you're influencing a friend or a colleague or a teacher, you're selling. If you want to lead in your career, you're selling. Every conversation you will have is a selling moment, which often begins with, what do you do? Michelle, back to you. 
Thank you, Todd. Thank you. And before we wrap things up and move on to that meet and greet session, we do have one one question here for you sure. um, for, from, a, from one of our viewers here. And, you know, when we when we go to, to and I'm paraphrasing here, but, um, you know, when we're when we're selling ourselves, as you described, how do we kind of. You know, there's always that fine line of, of maybe bragging, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of losing them, you know, pretty quickly. So how do you walk that fine line? To not yeah. Bragging? So don't, first, first of all, don't brag because there's no need to. Right. I mean, the simple, the easiest answer is the most obvious and simple answer. You see, when people begin to brag, it's because we don't have the faith in ourselves to believe that we're worthy of sitting there having this conversation. So we just go on and on and talk about how great we are. You see, that's somebody who is probably a little insecure, and, and that's just so sad to me, right, when we, when we go and we brag. So you don't have to brag. If you're sitting there and you have an opportunity to share something about yourself, you know, bragging doesn't, isn't, doesn't mean you can't share what you're passionate about and why you love doing it and how it can help me be better. Bragging is, I'm great at this, I'm great at that, I've done this, I've done that, I've won this award, I've won that award, you've already lost me. You see, that's bragging. Talking about yourself in a way that shows your passion, that's not bragging, that's what we call authentic. That's what we call genuine, and that's who I want to hire. So I hope that... I hope that begins to answer the question a little bit. It sure did. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well said. It's, it's, and it's a great question. It's something that, you know, I think all young people and a lot of old people <laughs> still struggle with. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, Todd, thank you. I can't, we can't thank you enough for your My time pleasure. and My pleasure. incredibly important message tonight. Yeah. It, it really is. And, and, and nobody teaches this in college. Nobody's teaching this in high school nobody's teaching this. You have to learn this the hard way as I did. And, I, you know, I, I want everybody listening to this and, and, you know, these awesome young folks to remember that <laughs> nothing is going to be handed to you. You got to sell yourself. You have to get out there and share your passion with the world. And you've got to be open to people sharing how they see you. You've got to be open to it without getting defensive or upset. They're trying to help you. And boy, I'll tell you, when I started this career 12 years ago, if I had a nickel for every time someone said, listen, Todd, now hold on, you know, <laughs> I, uh, and they would give me some advice, I'd be rich. But I listened to every single, every single line. And whether I agreed with it or not wasn't the issue. The issue was I was grateful for, it, for somebody taking the time to share it with me. That made me a better person. And and successful. Right. And, and to your point, too, it's no better time for our, for our viewers, our students watching here this evening to, to start now, you know, preparing and, and selling themselves. So. Boy, don't, don't, you know, the 25 or 30 people who are on tonight and then and the 100 and some, you, if you play your cards right, you're going to be the best equipped people when you're done with college. You will rip it up. I promise you that what I've shared with you tonight will make a mountain of difference six years or whatever, five, six years from now, whenever I know we have juniors and seniors and sophomores and freshmen and all kinds of people. So, you know, whenever you're out of college, you're looking for that first job, you, you think about this lesson tonight, I promise you, it'll come back to you in a way that will help you. No doubt about it. Wonderful. Well, and, and I know, Todd, that you've been really, you know, busy tailoring your messages to the, the virtual world, yeah. uh, like we are meeting here this evening. And yeah. uh, we're so grateful, truly, for your commitment to our foundation yeah. and, and to all of our, our students. Uh, I, you guys do, you guys do, uh, all I can, you do phenomenal work. And all I can say is when I was in high school, there was nothing like this, right? I wish that I could have gone away for a week and learned how to run a business. I mean, that would have made a massive difference in how I started my business. I, I, it just didn't exist then. So, you know, can I, I, I want to know if I can go back about 40 years and start over it. No, I don't want to go back that far. And, you know, in 40 years and, and come and be a student there. Well, come up and join us next summer. We look forward to, to seeing you in person next summer. Yeah, up in person, in person, yes, no more. I have, I have zoom fatigue. I'm tired. <laughs> I want to be with human beings again. Yes. Yes. Well, again, Todd, thank you. And for our viewers, uh, if you'd like to connect with Todd, his direct contact information is listed on our website and we'll all follow at the conclusion here.
There it is. Uh, and I, yes, absolutely. And I know, Todd, I, I know that you would love to hear from, from our viewers here. So don't hesitate to reach out to him. No, uh, not at all. I, I, am, I, am always, I, I am always happy to help and uh, spend time with people. And, uh, you know, I'm old school. I'm still a guy who likes to talk on the phone. But if you want to email me, you're welcome to it. Thank you for that. And also to our viewers, don't forget our live virtual meet and greet session with Todd will begin in uh, just a few short minutes here. And we invite all of you to join us there. Uh, and the link to uh, that session is available right now in the chat section. Uh, so be sure to copy the link now because as soon as we stop this webinar uh, to start that meet and greet, the link will be gone. So you'll just simply need to exit out of this meeting and join using the meet and greet link. Uh, tonight's event was recorded and will be made available to everyone in a few days on our PFEW website and our YouTube channel. And finally, a huge thank you to all of our wonderful donors who have made all of our virtual programming possible, including this live speaker series, our taped uh, interviews, and also our free offering of the stock market game. We couldn't do it without our loyal supporters, so thank you. And we appreciate all of you uh, for joining us this evening. And we look forward to gathering next Thursday at 8 p.m. when we will welcome back Mr. Tom Murphy. So have a safe week, everyone. And we can't wait to join you next Thursday. And I'll see you in a few minutes.